Hello web developers, Jimmy here. I wanted to talk about how you could kit your code from Codecademy and uh, upload it to your website using Qt FTP. All right, so first thing, I have Qt FTP up and running. Uh, it is, I didn't pay for this version of Qt FTP, so I'm still running it in uh, the uh, trial mode. I already have a, a web uh, FTP client that I use called Transmit, which I use for my Mac, which is the best FTP client I've ever used. If you're going to be spending some money, I recommend finding one you like and paying for it. If you can get away with using FileZilla, uh, if you are if you can find the version of it that doesn't, doesn't have any adware, that's the way to go because it's free. Uh, but I have Qt FTP up and running there. So I'll come back to that. So I have a super advanced web page on Codecademy. Notice up here I've made it through step six of six, build your own web page, and I've added all the stuff I needed to. I've made it through all the little uh, hoops so that you can see there's my super awesome web page over there. Uh, my picture's way too big, but that doesn't matter. So <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to take this code here and I want to put it on, uh, on the web. Because right now where it is is, well, it is on the web, but I want to put it, I want to own it. I want to take this HTML, bring it to my computer and put it in my F, my uh, uh, text editor. That's the phrase. And then we're going to put it on the web. I recommend you use Text Wrangler on the Mac or if you're going to use uh, a Windows computer, use Notepad++. Do not try to use Microsoft Office for this. And Notepad is okay if you're using Windows but it is not my favorite uh, way to do this. Uh, one of the reasons is if you use BB Edit, like I'm using here, which is expensive, or Text Wrangler, which is from the same company but free, or you use Notepad++, it'll uh, syntax highlight, meaning it'll show you uh, a lot like what it looks like here in Codecademy, how uh, tags are one color and the content inside of tags are another color, and the words that just show up in the browser are a third color. Uh, a web-based or a web-oriented text editor is going to do a very similar thing. A programming-oriented text editor is going to do the same thing as well. So I went and copied the paste from copied the paste. I went and copied the code from my Code Academy page, and you can see there it says "Congratulations, you finished this course." So that's I notice I'm on the last step, six of six. So I copied my HTML, I paste it now into my client, my. Uh, text editor and then I'm going to save this save notice by the way one of the things you can do with BB edit and word uh, with text wrangler is there's an option here to save straight from the text editor to an FTP server I'm not going to do that here so I can show you how you would uh, take it put it on uh, Qt FTP and post it to the web uh, so I'm going to save as it's going to bring up a dialog. Notice that it recognizes this as HTML, but you need to make sure that the extension on your file is .html. You also want to know what you're going to call this. So I'm going to call this code academy underscore one for my first assignment. Uh, and I'm going to put this in my own website, so I don't need to put my name on it or anything. But I do need to know what I named it and what I uh, where I've saved it. It's on my desktop. I always use all lowercase and dashes or underscores. I'm actually going to switch this from a underscore to a dash. I've, I'm trying to stop using underscores whenever I can because dashes work just as well. Uh, the Whatever your text editor says for line breaks and encoding, leave it the way it is. Mine is UTF-8, which I know is right. Uh, I'm going to save that. So I'm actually going to get rid of BB Edit for the minute. I'm going to hide it. And I'm going to switch over here to Qt FTP. Uh, so I downloaded this. I'm running it in the trial mode. I think I have 29 days left. I just ha uh, downloaded this version. Um, but I wanted to show you what you would need to do um, to make Qt FTP work. Uh, I use FileZilla in a lot of my other videos, so this one will use that as an example instead. Use Qt FTP instead. All right. So I clicked. Uh, what it does is it starts out at this thing called Site Manager, which you can open up here. Uh, and I'm going to put my EUID as my dot peak of all peas. oops, dot net. I'm going to put that as my label and I'm going to put that as my host name. And my username is my whatever your EUID is. Password. I'm not sure that's my actual password. 
we'll revisit that. SFTP. I'm actually going to go to another screen here. You guys won't see me doing this. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm using LastPass for most of my uh, password management, and I saved a copy of it there. So uh, that way, when I switch back over here, ha. Uh, okay, things to note about the site manager: the label and the host name don't have to be the same, but you might as well make them the same. Your username is going to be your EUID, unless. Uh, you have, are taking this course again and I've had to make a new account for you. The password is uh, whatever password I told you via email. Um, and then for security, select un, out of all the options, select the one that's SFTP. That's what we use uh, on my web server. And notice it'll open up port 22, which is the one you want, and it's on normal. So if I hit connect now, it'll save this entry in the uh, site manager and it will connect me to my uh, Oh, and it'll connect me to my FTP server. At the very top there, let me scroll up and show you this. It says, are you sure you want to continue connecting? The authenticity of this host can be established. What it's doing is it's saving on your computer the uh, SSH IDs, which is a secure ID. That's part of the uh, secure FTP part. Um, and notice that it said it can't do that, and then it went ahead and did it anyway. So at the top here is a list of like server messages. It's very nerdy. Not super helpful most of the time, but you can at least see what's going on up in this window. On the left-hand side is all the files on my individual computer, and on the right-hand side over here is the server. So um, I'm gonna go, this is a Mac, so we're gonna do this slightly differently than we were for using Windows. I'm gonna go users, and my username, and my desktop. And then there is a, um, I have so many files, Codecademy one right there. Now over here on the right-hand side, there's a, couple of folders, the, the jn0074.peakofallpeace.net, that's my web server. So by double clicking it, what I have now in my right hand window is my web server. So I'm gonna take codecademy1.html, I know what it's called. And by the way, I knew it was on my desktop, so that, that's how I knew where to go find it. I'm gonna drag it and drop it. And notice it's right there, codecademy1.html. So if I come over here and I go jn0074, notice I'm typing in Chrome, I could be using Firefox, but I already had Chrome open. Uh, so I'm typing in the address bar. No FTP in there. Notice there was no FTP in Qt FTP. I just used JN0074. The web address is also the FTP address. They're the same thing. .pika, volpes, .net, slash, code, academy, dash, whoop, one dot HTML. Notice I have to know the exact file name. So, and there's my Codecademy HTML. It's not, it's not great, but it worked. So now the URL is euid.peakofallpeace.net slash whatever I named the file. So when I uh, copied and pasted, or I dragged and dropped from Qt FTP from the right-hand side, I'm sorry, from the left, which is my computer, to the right, which is the server, once I did that, the file is now on the web. So as long as I know the file name, I can just stick that on the end of the URL that I've been given, which is euid.peakofwallpiece.net. Mine is jn0074. That file's now on the web. Now, if I just go to jn0074.peakofwallpiece.net, this particular website may not have a link to that file I just dragged and dropped. So and notice I have this some code already showing up in here. So it's not necessarily... Uh, true that just by knowing the URL, you can find the file name. You're going to have to know the URL and the file name and type both into your uh, into your web browser's search box. So now I could take and copy this URL and I could actually go and put it on my All About Me page. I could go to all uh, peakofwallpiece.net and log in. Uh, here, we'll do that. Go to peakofwallpiece.net. Go to where I have my page. I'm going to go to Site Admin. And I could go to a page here. I don't even know if JN0074 has a page, but I bet so. So we can find that somewhere in here. As a matter of fact, uh, one of the things you can do is you can search in the search pages here. So let's hope that actually works. That would be great. Uh, you can see that some people have made their content here. You can actually, by the way, everybody has editor access. So be careful about that. So there's my page. I'm going to hit edit and wait. Patience is a virtue. Uh, and so I decide that right here, in next one here, I'll actually delete where I've put that and save. 
Code Academy Assignment 1. Highlight the text, click Insert Link, paste the URL that I had on my web browser before, hit Update, and there. Now when my high quality instructor comes to check out my All About Me page, he'll see that I have my Code Academy assignment linked right there. Uh, so that is how you go to Code Academy, write your code, uh, bring it over into a text editor, save it on your computer, use FTP to put it on the web, check your web browser to make sure that it actually is on the web, take that URL and then put it on your All About Me page. That should just about do it.